I'm going to go straight for the GPM package, which is, let me search for it, it'd be easy, wouldn't it? GPM, there it is there. So there you go, it's a general purpose mouse daemon, contains a mouse server for the console and Xterm. And there we've got some links, and there's a patch there we need. And then, all oh right, okay, so we've got some um, kernel configuration to do to make sure this works. Now, um, as we configured the kernel originally in Linux from scratch, we accepted the default configuration, and I'm pretty sure that it does include this setting by default but we'll check that just to make sure so let's go back to our sources directory and into the Linux directory and once again do make menu config and we need to go to device drivers which is down here input device support which is somewhere down here, there it is and then we look for something called mouse interface which is input mouse dev alright oh, okay so it's not actually set so we do need to change this and rebuild the kernel and reinstall it so let's put a yes in there to make it um, active permanently and it doesn't say about any other settings so we can just leave them and let's exit that save it and let's now rebuild it okay that's good that's not affected too much else so it's built nice and quickly and let's see if we can recall the copy commands we did before so there's the kernel uh, let's do that again yeah if you're not sure about recalling commands what you do is you do control R you type in a part of the command that you know that you want to copy from or recall rather so I want to do a copy command I know it's the last copy command I did was to do with the kernel the first one I've done is the image, the next one I want to do is the system.map but it's come with, up with the most recent one which is the kernel image that I just copied. To get the next one backwards in time I do control R again. That's the config file, I want the system.map so I do control R again. It's gone back one further and it's come up with system.map copy command so now I can press enter and I can do the same thing again for the config. So control R CP, I can even put space in config. Uh, sorry, it's dot config, and there it's come up with it straight away without having to press the control R to to look for it. So I've copied that. I'll do the make modules install as well, just in case. And now I'm going to reboot again. And you'll find this as we go through Beyond the Links from Scratch. Certain packages need certain settings in the kernel. So we will be building and rebuilding the kernel several times throughout the, the um, build process. Okay, so let's log in again. Back to the sources directory. And as you can see, there's all the Linux from scratch um, packages. What I normally do is make a new directory for the BLFS stuff. I'll put it in capital so it stands out. If you want to do the control R thing, you know, I could do control R and then capital B and it's come up with BLFS straight away rather than a lowercase B, which would be more common. You know, it might come from package or something. Uh, so if I CD into BLFS, so we're going to store all our um, BLFS packages in this directory. So we need to fetch the package. Now, as I said in the introduction, we've got no way of fetching anything. I can't even copy and paste here because if I right click on this, that 
nothing happens. This is just the screen of the the uh, PC that I'm recording on. So this is why we need GPM. But another problem is that we can't. There's no way of downloading. There's no package to download stuff off the internet. All we've got is a program called FTP. Now we're lucky in that GPM has got an FTP link to download from. But if you notice, there's a required patch which has got an HTTP protocol URL. So we can't we can't actually build this at the moment because we can't download the um, the patch to correct. I don't know what the correction's for, but it might be something significant like enabling the build to build correctly. Um, I'm not sure even if it says, does it? No, it doesn't say. I imagine it would do inside that patch. Um, oh, it, in fact, the title gives it. It says glibc 2.261 patch. Now, that implies that it won't build with glibc 2.26 um, without this patch. So it does. that's probably why it's a required patch. The, the package will not build without this patch. So therefore, we can't install GPM at the moment. So there is another package, which, well, there's a couple of other packages, actually, we can use to um, fetch files from. Um, if I go back to home, just open this up in a new tab, so I'll know that we've still got to come back to GPM. There's two. There's one called curl, common... Unix resource locator, I think it is, and another one called wget. They're similar in some respects, um, but wget tends to have more options that are useful for the sort of things that we're going to be doing. Um, you can use curl, um, but wget, yeah, it's a little bit easier. Um, it also put, supports resume, so if you've got a slow link or a unreliable link there's an option in there to continue a download if it does drop out halfway through I don't believe curl has got that so we will be um, searching uh, uh, using wget and also that's what the um, LFS team have used previously in Linux from scratch so let's look for that one so there it is there so let's click on that and as you can see we've also got an FTP link for downloading so that's handy and there's no um, no patches or anything no other links we need now uh, we've got a recommended um, package but it's a runtime requirement a runtime run dependency so it's not required when we're building it so that's that's good we don't need to worry about that there's some optional um, packages at this stage, because we're just getting a basic system up, I'm not worried about these sort of things. Um, what we'll do is we'll rebuild wget later on um, to take advantage of these these other packages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a note that I want to rebuild wget. Just make a little handwritten note. And then I'll know that I need to come back and reinstall that to enable this extra functionality. Once we've got wget, wget supports various um, protocols, certainly the ones that we're interested in. So it supports FTP, it supports HTTP. It does support HTTPS, but because we haven't got the certificates, which I think is what this package is about, it will warn us that it can't download them because it can't verify them, but we can, we'll see that when we come to it. There's a switch to tell it to ignore the fact that it can't validate them. Um, but again, that's another reason why we'll come back and reinstall wget so we get this extra functionality that it can actually download from HTTPS uh, protocol URLs correctly and um, not complain about it and do the actual validation and so on. But for now, we'll just stick with the basics. Um, we need to download from an FTP website. So FTP, if you've never used it for, fairly straightforward. Just a few commands you need to type in to get things to work. So let's just check where we are. We're in our sources BLFS directory. We type FTP. And you can either type FTP in the URL 
or you can just run FTP on its own and to connect to the address you type open and then the full address but without the protocol because by default we're in the FTP package it's the only protocol it knows about so you just start timing, typing from FTP on, on, onwards to the end of org it's just the address we're typing in the, the sorry the domain so it's FTP dot gnu dot org so there we've got a connection now and it wants to know our name now we haven't got an account so normally when you've got an account you use what's called an anonymous account and you just type in the name anonymous sometimes it'll ask you for a password some places ask you for an email address generally you can just press enter just give it a blank password because it's it's just an open thing for anybody to go into so we're in inside the remote machine um, at the ftpgnu.org server and we have to be fairly quick typing here because if we don't type something the connection will time out so we can do things like pwd to see where we are on the remote server so we're in the root directory of the remote server and as you can see we need to change down a few directories we need to change into the gnu directory and then into the wget directory so we just type cd gnu and you could do forward slash wget or we could do what we're doing here one at a time so if you do print working directory it's gone to GNU you can actually type ls to see what's in that directory as well and in actual fact you can see there's the directory we're going to go to next it says there wget is the next part of the um, file URL so we type again cd wget and we're now in the wget directory and you can see there's just hidden behind the windows all different versions and so on and we want the 1.2.0.3 directory uh, file so you can check that there if you want by typing wget lswget-1.20.3 put a star in and there you go that's it's there in gz format and it's also there in lz format we'll just stick to what the book's given us i'll do that for this demonstration but of course if you're feeling brave or you've got a slow connection you can download the LZ there's really no difference to speak of now the next thing we've got to do with FTP is we need to tell it we want to download a binary file by default it downloads um, an ASCII file a text only file so to do that we type binary you can type some of these words in short so binary you can actually put in but bi and it will switch to binary mode um, some websites yes it, it says here consider using passive connections I can't remember what the detail is about these but I believe off the top of my head it puts less strain on the server so let's put in PASS for passive you can type the whole word in if you want um, so that's set up the connection correctly now so all we need to do now is type get and the name of the file so wget-1.20.3.tar Dot gz so I've just copied that part there press enter it's downloading and it says transfer complete and that's it we've got that file come out of the FTP just type quit and it drops the connection it says goodbye so we've now we're now back at our local directory ls minus l and there's our file and we can also of course check the MD5 sum to make sure a we've got the right file and B, it's not been tampered with, it's a different file with the same name. So let's do MD5 sum wget, oops, wget. Sorry, I've got two keyboards here and they're slightly out of position from where I'm used to. Right, so there's the MD5 sum. Normally, I'll just check the beginning and end, the first few characters, beginning and end. It's normally good enough. DB4E, yeah, that's okay, and 4899 at the end and the middle bit as well you can see it's got cbddcd cbddcd so that is the correct file so we can start compiling our first blfs package so let's extract it tar minus xvf this should work irrespective of whether it's a gz file or an xz or a bz2 file or whatnot so you don't need to worry about the format of the compressed file too much yeah, that's how it's extracted okay with no errors. Let's change into oops, change into it. 
and we start, as I say, typing in these commands. So we have to type them very carefully. So it's forward slash, uh, sorry, dot forward slash configure. At the commands, try typing tab to complete, and you're less likely to make typing errors then. Just double check that the tab has actually filled in the word that you want, though. One minus prefix equals full slash user. Now you can, if you want, put these backslashes in and carry on on new lines. Um, I'll show you that with just one line, but other, other than that, I'm not normally going to use that unless I find it's going to help me. Um, so if I press enter there, you see it's prompted me for another line. So the next line is minus minus sys conf der. Just check the spelling sys conf der. Yep. Equals four slash ECC. As I say, I'm not going to put the rest of it on separate lines. Just carry on as it is. Minus minus with dash SSL equals open SSL. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned, I should mention now before I go any further, is in BLFS they give you a kind of recommended um, configuration command with a set of switches. Uh, generally, it's before you actually start typing that configure command, it's quite a good idea to go down to command explanations part and look to see if there's any other options you can actually add in that they tell you about. So normally with a configure command, there's loads of options, but you don't know which ones to use or you don't know what to enable. They generally tell you in the BLFS book what you can enable, what's a good thing to enable or what's suggested that might be useful. So it's worth coming down here because it might have an option. For example, if you want to enable these Valgrind tests, this, this switch, this option is not in the example, but you might want to enable that. So it tells you here what, what the... Um, option is to enable that so that's why it's quite good and not only that it does explain what the the options are so for example this one it says it re relocates the configuration file from user etc into the more usual etc directory and then the with ssl equals open ssl command uh, option it allows the program to use open ssl instead of new tls so obviously you can see that, that from that link, that's part of BLFS. Um, and obviously, we're right at the beginning of BLFS. is our first package. We haven't installed GNU TLS. So this is probably a better one that we're using OpenSSL, which we installed in Linux from scratch because we don't have to install any other packages. The ampersand ampersand, that's, set, that's um, like a command to the bash uh, interpreter saying, once this command is completed, look at its result. If it's if it's a good result and it, it completed successfully, run the next command. So it would automatically run make. If that the output of this command failed, it wouldn't carry on and run make. So normally if you're copying and pasting, that's quite good to have because you'll know that um, the configure command uh, passed because the make command carried on and started building. Um, in this case, it doesn't really matter if we put it in or not. We could do, but I'm not going to. So I'm just going to do take it steady and take one step at a time here because we're, A, with the root user, and B, we're not copying and pasting. We've got to be very careful what, we, what we're doing and what, what I'm typing here. So what, before I press enter, I'm just going to once more check what I've typed in. And it's dot .configure space minus minus prefix equals user, full slash user sysconf equals full slash etc and with ssl equals open ssl so that's fine so i'm just going to press enter now Okay, so it's built, and you can see there's some things that it's building with, and some things it's not building with. So, PCRE is not building with, and PSL, and so on. And a few other things it's not building with, but the, these are probably some things that uh, will be addressed with other packages that we install. So, you know, as I say, we'll come back and build this 
um, at, an, at another time. So next let's build it. I'm going to make it parallel. Uh, if you remember there's a make flags variable, I think it is make flags. Um, uh, arguably we could set that now, um, but I'm just going to stick with specifying it on the make command for the time being. Um, and we'll set that up when we um, have got a normal user that's making and building these um, so it, it doesn't really matter how you do it, uh, but for now I'm not going to bother with that environment variable. I'm just going to, as I say, just specify the number of jobs on the command line when I run make. Okay, so that's built. So now let's run make check. Um, it does say that some tests are known to fail if Perl module IO socket INET 6 is installed. Now, as far as I know, we haven't got that installed. Um, the tests may fail anyway because of the fact that A, we haven't got the recommended uh, make CA in, and we certainly haven't got any of these optional um, packages in. So we'll, we'll just run it and see how it goes. If it does fail, it's not such a great problem because, as I say, we're going to come back and rebuild it. It will work because um, I have done this before. It will work and be useful to us. So let's just see what happens anyway it's uh, always good to know uh, what works what doesn't yeah there's a few failures there yeah 65 failures so um yeah see there's https tests there that are failing so that's probably because the as i say that certificate that certificate package is not installed and that's probably why it's recommended and it's a requirement at runtime as well which is probably what the tests are checking for so, uh, yeah, let's, sorry, I'll keep on clicking on the background and I don't need to. Um, so let's now install the package. So let's make install. And we should now have a wget um, binary available. And there it is all working. So that's good. So that's complete. We can... Uh, get rid of that one and go back to GPM now. 